Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on Dana Mobim. Today I have a little bit of a unique episode, and for the first time, I am not going to be in the Revit sample file. So, today, in preparation for Autodesk University, I'm going to be talking a little bit about key plans. The Chinamo Group, the Chicago Dynamo Group, myself, Asan, John Pearson, and of course, Paul Aubin, who runs Shinamo, they are going to be coming together for a meetup at Autodesk University, and we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things surrounding automation, computation, if you will. So one of those pieces requires a title block with a nested key plan. So that's actually what we're going to create today. I'm going to go back to basics, talk about some families. So... I have a file open, the file that we're going to be using at Autodesk University. So once again, not the sample file that I usually use, but you can see here that I have a standard plan, right? A one eighth plan, very typical kind of three parts. You can see here that the scope boxes have already been set up. So we already kind of know the key plans that we want. The first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate this plan. Doesn't need to have any do detailing with it because I'm actually going to turn a lot of the annotation categories off. Let's actually just go ahead and turn all of the annotation elements off by unchecking show annotation categories in this view within the visibility graphics. So you can see nothing is on here in terms of annotation. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the scale that I want it to be in my key plan. In this case, I want it to be a 1 to 100. So I'm just going to make that incredibly small. And I'm going to call this key plan test view. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to a sheet and place that where I want my key plan to go. And you can see it kind of fits nicely in there, right? Because I knew I needed that to be a 1 to 100 scale. Now the reason that I needed this to be on the sheet, doesn't really matter where it is, is I need kind of the paper space drawing of this building. And in order to do that, I need to kind of place this viewport on the sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some lines. I'm going to go to the annotate tab, draw a detail line around the building. Can be kind of rough, doesn't need to be really exact um, in terms of falling exactly on the building face. Just kind of trying to get a representation of this building form, right? Key plan, we're showing you know where the part of the building is referencing the sheet that you're looking at, right? In this specific project, it looks like we're going to have three parts, kind of an east, west, and middle section. And you can actually see over there in my project browser that my sheets have already been set up in that way, right? They've already been numbered that way. We have an east sheet, kind of a middle sheet, and a west sheet. So I'm just creating some key plans to align to that sheet setup. Once again, doesn't need to be really exact. You can see that I kind of fall off there. That's completely fine. I'm going to take these lines. Once again, I'm in the sheet kind of paper space. I do not have the viewport activated. I'm going to take these lines. I'm going to copy them into a generic annotation family that I've already started. This is a family that, once again, just right out of the box, generic annotation, that I am going to paste the lines into. Apparently, it doesn't want me to paste them automatically. It wants me to first set the work plane. So I'll do that. <laughs> I'll set my work plane, and then I'll paste those lines into here. So once again, in order to copy into my generic annotation, to my annotation family, I need to copy from paper space. So what I did was I duplicated a standard view, made it the scale of the key plan that I need, plopped that guy on the sheet, and in paper space, without activating the viewport, drew an outline 
any kind of line style, doesn't matter, around the building. Copied those lines into the family once, of course, upon setting the work plane, right? Did want me to see, set the work plane. You can see there, it gave me a warning. Now, I have my building outline, right? It is a little bit rough. If my building outline changes, I will need to kind of redo that process, which is why I went ahead and just kept this view, right? At this point, I can go ahead and delete him off the sheet and go ahead and get rid of these lines because those lines are going to be replaced with the generic annotation itself. And we're actually going to nest that into the title block family. So we're not going to come back into the project for a minute. So right back here into my generic annotation family, I need to create three filled regions. Filled region for the east, a filled region for that middle portion, and a filled region for that west section, right? So once again, it can allude to which part of the building you're looking at based off of the sheet that we're looking at, okay? So I'm just gonna come over here, create a filled region. And I can use the pick line tool now because I have these lines, right? And I'll just trim these down. Oh, I didn't like that line. That's okay. We'll trim this down here so that we have a building form for our west portion. Get rid of those extra lines and finish that. And we could change this. Maybe we actually want our filled region to be a solid fill, not a diagonal crosshatch. Probably be a little bit easier to see within our project. So now I can go ahead and create another one for the middle section here, right? Just go ahead and pick these individual lines. Trim these up. So once again, I'm not doing anything ridiculous here. I'm drawing lines, drawing filled regions, right? Nothing really, really too crazy. The awesome part is going to come later at AU when we automate the key plans. So this is really in, in preparation for that automation process. So now that we have our three independent field regions, it looks like we just have one big one, but there is actually three there. We can start to assign visibility parameters. And within the generic annotation family, we're actually going to make instance-based parameters for these um, field regions so that they can show up or not show up by instance. So you can see here, we can associate a family parameter once we select on that field region. I'm going to create a, a family parameter and I am going to call this guy because it's looking at the west portion of my building just W. All right, make it easy for me. Once again, instance. It aligns to our sheet suffix, right? Once again, creating a visibility parameter this, for this guy. We'll call him M instance. And lastly, not the line, the filled region, E instance. So now when I have all three of those, I essentially want to be able to toggle when I have each of those parameters on or not. So I have the three visibility parameters that I started with, right, or that I created, east, middle and west, right? That essentially turns on those filled regions that I created. So now in order to control these, I'm gonna create a new parameter that's actually an integer. And I'm gonna call this key plan visibility. Once again, making it an instance parameter, not electrical, but common, integer, instance, okay. Maybe move this guy up. And we can essentially control the visibility of each one of these with a number.
right? So I'm going to say key plan, case needs to match exactly, visibility equals zero. Not minus zero equals zero. And you can see here that now it automatically turns that off. If I change it to one, it's no longer checked. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. I'll make this one one and this one two. So now as I manipulate this integer, you can see that if I have it at three, none of them are turned on. If I have it at two, my W field region is turned on, etc. And I can easily show this by turning on my preview visibility, right? And you can see that only one of my field regions is on. So now I'm going to load this into not my project, but actually my title block family. And I'm going to place this guy. And I am going to control these three parameters here with a title block parameter. And I am going to call this title block parameter something that actually kind of matches the, the numbering system, right? Because it's a little bit vague in terms of what those numbers mean. I know that it's 0, 1, and 2 for the different field regions, right? But we're going to create a parameter that makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a family parameter within my family types. And I'm going to call it key plan 0 for E, 1 for M, 2 for W, right? So now within this parameter name, it automatically tells me 0 will turn on the east region one will turn on the middle one two will turn on the west and I'm gonna make this a integer parameter because it needs to match the parameter that I created within that family make this an instance parameter hit OK and now I can map those parameters together so when I go to key plan visibility here you can see I can map that parameter to control this parameter so as I come in here and I change this number my fill and region changes right and once again it's numbered a little bit smarter right another thing we can do is maybe set a visibility parameter control all th together right maybe we want to be able to control whether this thing is on at all for some of our general sheets or what have you so we can make this just key plan visibility under other that's fine hit OK and now when I load this into my project I'll have these two parameters for my title block I'll have my key plan visibility so I can turn the key plan on or off and I'll have my key plan visibility integer so that I can tell which filled region to show hit OK load that into my project now and overwrite my title block family and you can see now that when I change that value it changes which key plan is actually visible based off the filled region this is the portion we are going to automate at AU if you have not done so already make sure you register for Autodesk University if the Autodesk University course has already happened I'll make sure the link is below for the session if it's recorded. Thanks so much for watching. Dana Mo Bim.